Hi, I'm Mike Wilkins, the pastor of the Manly Memorial Baptist Church in Lexington, Virginia, and this is an encouraging word. You've probably never heard of Russell Herman, but he promised the people of southeastern Illinois that when he died, he would remember them in a generous way. After his death, his will revealed that he had followed through with his pledge with the following gifts. $2.4 billion to the town of Cave and Rock, Illinois. $2.4 billion to the city of East St. Louis, Illinois. And $1.5 billion for various projects in southeastern Illinois. I'm sure that each of these places was pleased to be the recipients of such generosity. There was only one problem. Russell Herman was dead broke. At the time of his death, the only thing he owned was a 1983 Olds Toronado. He did not have the resources to make good on any of his promises. It's one thing to make a promise. It's another thing to be able to fulfill it. In a world filled with broken promises, God is the ultimate promise keeper. He will always keep his promises to us. Always. Each Wednesday for the next several weeks, I'm going to focus on one of God's promises. Today's promise is found in 2 Peter, the first chapter, verses 3 through 4. Those verses say, We now have everything we need to live a life that pleases God. It was all given to us by God's own power when we learned that He had invited us to share in His wonderful goodness. God made great and marvelous promises so that his nature would become part of us. Then we could escape our evil desires and the corrupt influences of this world. Did you catch God's promise? He promises that we can have a better life. Now that sounds nice, but how do we know that can really happen? Because God has the power to keep his promises. This passage says that God's promises are backed by His very own power. The original language here indicates that God possesses the greatest power there is. In fact, His power is so great that it can never be defeated or frustrated. God has the power to keep His promises to us. Sometimes in life we feel overwhelmed by our problems, and we think that they are so big that there's nothing that can be done about them. But then the Bible tells us nothing is impossible with God. I don't know about you, but that gives me hope. God has the power to keep his promises to us. He not only has the power to keep his promises, we're told that God is generous with them. He says that we now have everything we need to live. God doesn't hold anything back. He generally gives us everything we need as we face our fears regarding our future, our families, our fulfillment, and our finances. God's promises are always about real life. This passage also indicates the kind of life God intends for us to have by saying that we can now live a life that pleases God. As we share in His goodness, God gives us everything that makes this life worth living. We can now live life as it ought to be lived and fully experience His blessings in the midst of all the trials and tribulations of life. As Jesus said, I came so you can have real and eternal life, more and better life than you ever dreamed of. God's promise is that we can experience a better life. One of my all-time favorite comic strips is Calvin and Hobbes by Bill Watterson. You may remember that the comic chronicled the life of a little boy named Calvin and his stuffed tiger named Hobbes. In one of my favorite strips, Calvin comes marching into the living room. His mom is sitting there, sipping her morning coffee. She looks up at young Calvin and is amused and amazed by how he is dressed. Calvin's head is encased in a large space helmet. A cape is draped around his neck, across his shoulders, and down his back, and is dragging on the floor. 
In one hand, he has a flashlight, and in the other, a baseball bat. What's up today? asks his mom. Nothing so far, answers Calvin. So far, she questions. Well, you never know, Calvin says. Something could happen today. Then as he marches off, he says, And if anything does, by golly, I'm going to be ready for it. Then Calvin's mom says, I need a suit like that. We know how she feels, don't we? When we look at all the changes and challenges of life, at all the demands and difficulties facing us, we realize that we can't handle it all by ourselves. We need help. Thankfully, though we may not have a suit like Calvin's, we have something even better. We have God and his promise to give us a better life than we ever thought possible. A life filled with everything we need to triumph over whatever this world sends our way. Because of God and his promises, we can say, like Calvin, something could happen today. And if anything does, I'm going to be ready for it. Thanks for watching today. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you.